You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. Jeremiah's Fourth Confession. Jeremiah 18, 18 to 23. As smart listeners were quick to spot, and some were kind enough to point out, my series on Jeremiah's confessions missed out the fourth confession in 1818 to 23. I'd expected to go back and fill in the missing confession within a day or so, but as so often events conspired to cause hope to fail in realization. So, now belatedly, the fourth confession of Jeremiah. He starts off quoting an anonymous they. Perhaps if we hearers of Jeremiah remember the previous confessions, we'll realize it's his opponents. In any case, when they speak in the prophets, it's almost always opponents. And remember, it's often useful in reading the prophets to listen for the voices. They in the prophets is usually only given voice so the speaker can demolish the straw opponent. Here, they are the voice of the established, the voice of people like you and me. Well, at least like me, with titles like Doctor and Reverend. But many of you either share one or both of the titles, or aspire to one, or you have your own, boss, parent, elder, leader. We established people are hesitant about change. The wisdom of years lets us see the dangers in awakening the sleeping status quo. Listen to them. Instruction won't run out from the priest, nor will counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Yep, things can carry on pretty fine if Jeremiah will just stop shaking the boat. We've got it all covered. The priests will instruct, as they always have. The wise will give advice, as they always have. And prophets will declare the word, as they always have. So, verse 18b, let's bring charges against him, and above all we hear implied. Let us not pay attention to any of his words. Jeremiah then starts to speak for himself, neatly linking his words to theirs, echoing their last verb. Pay attention, Yahweh, to me. It's more striking in the Hebrew than in the usual English order. Pay attention to me, Yahweh, which would separate the divine name from the imperative verb, the one that Jeremiah highlights by repeating it. Jeremiah demands that Yahweh wake up and take notice, as if the maker of all was in the habit of snoozing on the job. You see, these confessions present a dramatic picture of Jeremiah's turbulent relationship with his Yahweh. Actually, of course, it's not me that Jeremiah wants God to notice, really. It's them. Pay attention in the back row, Yahweh, to me. And now I've got your attention. Listen to what my adversaries are saying, verse 19. Should good be paid back with evil, yet they dig a pit to kill me. Just remember how I stood before you to speak good for them, to turn away your wrath from them. Verse 20. Okay, now having established himself as Mr. Nice Guy, our Jeremiah continues in verses 21 and 22. Therefore give their children over to famine, hurl them out to the power of the sword, and let their wives become childless and widowed. May their men meet death by pestilence, their youths be slain by the sword in battle. May a cry be heard from their houses when you bring the marauder suddenly upon them, for they've dug a pit to catch me, and laid snares for my feet. Oh boy, I bet Yahweh was proud of his prophet. What forbearance, what dignity of such a great soul. Actually, Jeremiah demonstrates that he is a mere human, with an all-too-human response. Yet you, O Lord, know all their plotting to kill me. Don't forgive their crimes. Do not blot out their sin from your sight. Let them be tripped up before you. Deal with them while you're angry. Once again, you see, it's no surprise that there's no divine response. For how would you respond if you were God to a cheeky prophet who demands your attention, can't make up his mind whether to plead for mercy or revel in justice? And of course, these confessions are not simple texts. There's a depth and a richness to them and we are required to respond to them. Jeremiah isn't a model for us to copy. We shouldn't be praying for vengeance on our enemies like Jeremiah does, that's clear. No, it's our response to Jeremiah's confession that will declare who we are. We are read in reading the text. And maybe we spot ourselves in the text and cringe. Anyway, 
may God bless to you this reading from his holy word. Amen.